In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the fuel pump on this Ford E350. It's located in the tank and we have to remove it for this procedure, so let's get started. Let's start by pulling the fuel pump fuse so that we can relieve fuel pressure. In the engine compartment, you'll see that in front of the coolant tank, there's a cover which you, if you open it will expose the entire junction box, fuse box, whatever you want to call it. We're going to pull the fuel pump relay, which is actually this one right here. It's the fifth relay. You'll have some markings on the cap tell you, telling you the number of the fuses and relays. I'm going to very gently use some pliers. You don't want to break this, but sometimes they do get a little bit stuck. There we go. With no power to the fuel pump, the engine will stumble, the injectors will still fire and release the fuel pressure, but the fuel pump will not operate. Okay, let's crank over the engine. Once again, it may start or it may just stumble. Or it may not start at all, perfect. Under the van, apply some support to the fuel tank. You don't need to put pressure on it, but just enough to support it. Now, if you're on the ground, you can use whatever you have that'll support it. Uh, there are floor jack attachments that'll support transmissions and fuel tanks. I just have the transmission jack for the lift with a fuel tank attachment on it. Now it has these pads that are going to support it as far out as possible. It is a very long tank, so you wanna make sure that it's not going to tip over. And just as a tip, the less fuel is in it, of course, the easier the job is going to be. Now we can start undoing the straps. To loosen up the straps, you'll see a long stud coming out from the top of the frame. This is the front strap. Use a 15 millimeter wrench or socket if you have one that's deep enough to fit on here. And that's how we're going to loosen these up. Once your wrench is fully seated on here, pull on it and hopefully yours isn't too stuck and you'll be able to undo it. Now, if you have a ratcheting wrench, which once I broke it free, that's what I'm gonna switch to. This will make things a whole lot easier because it's going to be quite a bit faster. I did also spray it with some rust penetrant to help me out. I'm going to use a wire brush to clean up these threads. Once you have that mounting nut off, pull the strap down. There it is, let it swing out of the way. The rear strap is gonna be right above the front side of the leaf spring. If you have rear heater and AC, you'll see the lines that kind of block it. It's this right here, same 15 millimeter mounting nut. Take it off the same way you did the front one. Now you can remove the rear strap, or at least swing it down and out of the way. To fully remove the strap, twist it on the back side where it goes on the frame and pull it right out through the slot. We'll do the same to the other strap. Now using your support, slowly and carefully lower the fuel tank a little bit. It's still connected up top with filler neck, electrical connector for the pump, all the fuel lines and all that. So don't go too far, but we need the space to get up there and disconnect all of those. You have to pull the tank away from the frame a little bit so that this outer lip can clear, otherwise it'll get stuck on it. All right, now let's disconnect the lines up top. Let's loosen up the two clamps holding the filler neck hoses onto the filler neck so we can separate these and lower the tank a little bit more. Use a six millimeter socket to loosen these up. With them loosened up, you'll be able to release the filler neck hoses off of the filler neck. Sometimes you can grab some pliers, twist it, and that'll break it free. You can also move this clamp out of the way. There we go.
There's one. There's the second one. Let's lower the tank a little bit more. Still don't go too far because the fuel lines are still attached. This will give us more space to work though. All right, we can access things now. This is uh, as far as I want to go before starting to put pressure on anything. From the top of the fuel tank, you'll see where the pump is, and this is where we have most of our connections. We have the electrical connector for the fuel pump, which has a red locking tab on it. We have to push that one towards the back of the van. And that's how you unlock this connector, just like that. Sometimes it's helpful to use a little pry bar or pocket screwdriver to push it. And now you'll be able to push on this tab, wiggle the connector, unplug it check it because a lot of times it does build up corrosion in here this one looks good so I'm gonna set it aside and now we have the main fuel line this right here which has a red locking tab spread the two tabs apart and remove the tab sometimes they pop off like that definitely find it because you'll need it to lock it now you can press in on the end of it here and while pressing that twist and pull that's going to unlock the line and allow you to pull it off of the tank or the pump there we go there is some fuel that will spill out of there that's normal that's the main fuel line and there is one more line to disconnect it's not this one this one stays attached it's at the back of the tank and now if you follow this evap line it goes to the back of the tank where the towards the charcoal canister press on the tab that sits up top here this one is supposed to also have a lock but mine's missing once you press that you should be able to twist it and disconnect it. Now this one is quite stuck here. Most likely just has a lot of debris built up. There we go. Got it. Set that aside. Okay, time to lower the tank. Make sure it doesn't get caught on anything. Like this. disconnect this line off of the fuel pump assembly it has a white clip that you have to pry out on both ends take that out this unlocks the main clip that holds this on press down on it lift this up take it off now we have to use a punch and a hammer to loosen up the lock ring holding the fuel pump on I recommend a brass punch because it doesn't make any sparks if you use a metal punch or a pry bar or anything like that it could make sparks as you hammer turn this counterclockwise go back and forth until it unlocks and then we can remove the fuel pump there it is take this off set it aside at this point I have some debris here I'm going to gently wipe it off with a rag so it doesn't fall in the fuel tank Contaminate the fuel. Remove the fuel pump by pulling it straight up. Careful of the rest of it, of course. Try to drain as much of it as you can into the tank. Try to drain as much as you can of this fuel pump in the tank. The level indicators right there, or the float. There it is. Remove the O-ring that seals up the pump. Put the O-ring seal on the fuel tank and then drop the fuel pump back in. Make sure you go gentle so that it doesn't actually bend anything. And you wanna make sure that it's facing the same way that it was when you removed it. Just like that. Now you want to hold it down and then get your lock ring, slide it over. Keep pressing it down and we're going to have to turn this lock ring to lock it in. Once you get it started you can let go, 
use your brass punch and drive it in the rest of the way. Alright, there we go, that's locked in. Now let's reconnect the EVAP line. Press it down. This had a locking tab. You want to make sure you push that back in. If it doesn't go in, that means it's upside down. There you go. Now let's lift our tank back up into place, but not completely. We have to reconnect the fuel pump and of course the fuel line and everything else. As you bring it up, pay attention to the filler neck hose, making sure that it doesn't get pinched underneath the frame. Fold it over so it can go up and over the frame. And now let's reconnect the fuel pump connector. Make sure that clicks and lock the tab. And then grab the main fuel line, put it right back onto its fitting. This had a red lock on it. Slide that lock back into place. There we go, press that on. Make sure everything is secured. And let's bring the tank up the rest of the way. Make sure that your filler neck goes up and over the frame, as I mentioned earlier. As we lift the fuel tank in place, make sure the two hoses for the filler neck line up. Let's reinstall the fuel tank straps, bring them into the frame up there, twist them in place. We'll do the same on the front strap. Put the other end through. Make sure that on the frame side it doesn't pinch any wires, lines, or hoses. It's going to be difficult to see, but you'll have to kind of move it around until it pops out through the top hole where you're supposed to mount it on. Oh, there it is. It helps if you have the mounting nut ready just to start it on so it doesn't fall back out after you've put it through so that you can then move over to uh, threading on or installing and then threading on the other one. All right, they're both started. Let's snug them up. Let's tighten this up and get our socket on here. That's as far as my socket will allow me to go. So now I just have to get my wrench and do it manually. And just snug it up. That bottomed out. I'm gonna get a longer wrench. I can't get a socket on here to torque it down or anything, but as long as this is tight, you're good to go. These are locking nuts. With a longer wrench, I can put a little bit more leverage into it and ensure that it's really nice and tight. Okay, that's plenty right there. Let's do the same to the front strap. Now lower your support. In the engine bay by the fuse box, let's put the relay back in to reactivate the fuel pump. Press it down all the way, make sure it's flush with all the other ones. Close the cover, make sure that clicks. Close the hood. Now we have to prime the fuel system since we had lines disconnected to get any air out. Stick the key in the ignition, turn it to the on position and leave it here for a few seconds. In a quiet environment, you'll actually hear the fuel pump cycling and running. Turn it off, do this again. I like to do this about three, maybe four times. That'll push fuel through the system, as well as into the fuel pump, of course, and get any air out. We'll do it one more time, and then we can crank it. It might stumble, it might even start and then shut off and uh, stall out, that's normal. But it could also just start and stay running, that's the goal. 
perfect. At this point, let it warm up, check for leaks of course, make sure you have no fuel leaks, and then take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.